Hello students, welcome to the series lecture of analog communication. In the earlier lectures, we have gone through the basic block diagram of communication system and we have discussed about what is modulation, what is the need of, mo need of modulation and then we have discussed which are the different types of modulation in analog communication. And that we have seen that we have three types of modulation. First is amplitude modulation, then frequency modulation and then phase modulation. Uh, today's topic is to discuss about the amplitude modulation. See, this is very lengthy topic, but still uh, I will try to cover it in one or more parts. See, if we uh, look at, uh, let us start with the definitions of amplitude modulation first. See, uh, in AM, the amplitude of carrier wave is varied with uh, in proportion to the voltage of message signal. So, as your message signal, let's say this is your message signal. So, with respect to the amplitude of your message signal, the amplitude of carrier wave is going to be changed right what, what it says is this is your message signal let's say and this is your carrier wave so see process of modulation it simply says that we have one low frequency signal so typically this uh, your message signal is of low frequency and your this carrier signal is of high frequency you can simply look at this it is having less number of repetitions this is having higher number of repetition so higher frequency low frequency we multiply it and we vary the characteristics of high frequency right with respect to the your message signal so your message signals amplitude with respect to the amplitude of message signal if the amplitude of carrier signal varies then it is called as amplitude modulation so when when it is uh, being modulated when the signal is being modulated how it looks like this is the way your AM wave looks like. I have drawn this for the under modulation. We will see the different cases of uh, AM modulation. This is for the right now under modulation. Right. So in that uh, inside that we have the high frequency now. But if you look at this particular amplitude that is nothing but it is the signal similar to the your message wave. So when you have the peak point over here at the same time you may have the peak point over here. When you have the lowest peak you may have the lowest peak over here. So this is the way how AM modulated signal has been drawn. Then let's say uh, if you want to derive the expression for the AM wave then what we are supposed to write here. So in the case of derivation of AM wave uh, I have uh, see we have two signals I have written message signal so let us denote it as VM of T with respect to time T uh, your signal voltage is going to be vary so it is vm cos omega mt any signal can be represented in this way and this vm is nothing but it is indicating the amplitude of this your message signal similarly i have represented carrier wave as vc of t so it is vc cos omega ct so this is what vc is what right now we indicate it is the amplitude of carrier wave and this is for the message signal so what i am trying to write is i am trying to write plus the what is the envelope of am wave so I am trying to write the amplitude of AM wave and we know that amplitude of AM wave is nothing but it is what the carrier signals characteristics is varying. So I am trying to vary the volt amplitude of carrier wave with respect to the message signal right. So, so that what happens ultimately I have the amplitude of modulated signal. Now see this is the amplitude of carrier wave this will be as it is in place of VM of T I am going to substitute this one. Right, so it will be Vm cos omega mt, right, and finally your modulated signal can be written as this amplitude into carrier signal. So we are changing the characteristics of carrier, that is why I have written this equation. You are changing the characteristics of carrier wave, that is what the amplitude amplitude modulated signal. But as a characteristics parameter, we have that is amplitude. So amplitude we are considering here. So this will be substituted by this Vc plus Vm cos omega mt. So I'll write Vc plus Vm cos omega mt into cos omega ct, right? Now you just need to uh, take common Vc from the bracket. So we are trying to uh, get the proper equation. So Vc I will take common. So it will be 1 plus Vm upon Vc cos omega mt into cos omega ct. So see uh, this Vm upon Vc that is called as modulation index and it is denoted with the m. So now we have converted our equation in the form of modulation index. It is written by Vc into 1 plus m cos omega mt into cos omega ct. So this is the time domain. This is called as 
प्राइम डोमेन इक्वेशन फॉर द एम वेव सो दिस इज द एम वेव इक्वेशन फाइन वेर एम इज इक्वल टू वी एम अपॉन वी सी नाउ विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द मॉड्यूलेट मॉड्यूलेशन इंडेक्स योर सिग्नल इज गोइंग टू बी चेंज राइट सो एज ए टोल्ड यू इन द Uh, in the starting of this lecture, we have drawn the signal for the under modulation. Similarly, we have three types of modulation in EM, depending on the value of M. So, if M is greater than one, then it is called as over modulation. If M is equal to one, then it is called as critical modulation. And if M is less than one, then it is called as under modulation. So, let us see uh, the time domain representation of AM wave, right? Uh, so it will be more clear to you guys so let's say initially up to this i have taken uh, this sig uh, this modulator signal as unmodulated so it will be only carrier wave initially it will be only the carrier wave and this is as we have taken this as cos omega series so that i am starting with the one here fine so this is initially unmodulated and then its amplitude is going to be changed with respect to the modulating signal so this is nothing but it is your modulating signal see right so from this to this this is nothing but it is your vm right because so this amplitude is up to this it is vc right and then you are going to add the voltage of modulating signal to that so modulating signal it will start from zero so this is zero point from zero to it will go to maximum that is vm so ultimately this wool this wool length is called as v maximum right and it is also called as v maximum is what it is the addition of vc plus vm right so we got one equation here that is v maximum that is vc plus vm isn't it and similarly see this is what vm i have mentioned here it is vm similarly this is also vm fine mm -hmm. and from the zero axis from this from this zero point axis i mean x axis to this distance it is called as minimum distance right so it is called as v minimum so that is v minimum and that you can write by simply uh, see up, up to this it is vc and if you substitute vm from that you will get v minimum so it is nothing but vc minus vm it is nothing but vc minus vm right so this is one way that how uh, you can have the understanding for the time domain uh, em wave so uh, let me try to derive one equation over here from this uh, see what we got is we got uh, v maximum that is equal to vc plus vm and v minimum that is equal to vc minus vm so if i add uh, this two first this is my equation number 1 this is my equation number 2 if you add this two then it will become v max plus v minimum and this side it becomes 2 times vc so vc is nothing but here it is v maximum plus v minimum by 2 right now if you subtract this two equation then what will you get if you subtract this two equation then you will get v max minus v minimum and for from this here it is 2 vm right vc is going to be cancelled out so vm you will get as v max minus v minimum by 2 isn't it then we know that what is modulation index that is vm upon vc isn't it so if i substitute the equation of vm over here v max minus v minimum by 2 divided by vc that is we have derived as v max plus v minimum by 2 this 2 is going to be cancelled out so ultimately your equation is going to be v max minus v minimum by v max plus v minimum isn't it so this is also one other equation for the modulation index so when you have the time domain representation right you you can calculate what is v max and what is v minimum and from both the uh, both of v max and v minimum value you can easily identify which type of modulation is there right if it, if you want to identify the percentage modulation then you have need to just simplify uh, the your modulation index with 100 you will get the percentage of modulation
right this is what how we represent the time domain am in time domain right in the next lecture we will try to derive the expression for the frequency domain representation right till that time bye thank you